Hey there, so welcome to this um, episode of Ubuntu Data. <laughs> um, I'm here today with Enrico, uh, Enrico de Asebio, who's the engineering manager for Charm Spark and Charm Kafka. But maybe you could introduce yourself, uh, Enrico. Uh, hi, hi, Rob. Hi, and uh, hi, everyone. And I'm uh, very glad to, to be here. I'm very excited to, uh, to share a little bit my experience and my knowledge uh, uh, around the, the Spark data platform. Uh, so, as Rob said, uh, I'm Enrico De Eusebio, I'm the engineering manager in uh, Data Platform and I'm basically overlooking around the products that they have to do a little bit with big data technologies. And um, I joined Canonical, I think it was about uh, actually a year ago, and uh, before that uh, I spent quite some time, like around seven, uh, seven years, uh, in the data science uh, landscape. So, um, actually creating applications that they were powered by machine learning models. So uh, cool. to some extent, uh, I was more like on use in Spark as a user, whereas now in Canonical, I'm more dealing with, uh, you know, really like uh, allowing people, creating like some infrastructure for allowing people to deploy Spark. So like more, I was maybe before a little bit uh, on the client side, now more on the server side. And uh, yeah, and that's, uh, that's it. So tell, tell me a bit about this, this infrastructure for deploying Spark. So maybe maybe for those that don't know what Spark is, you can maybe give a quick explanation of what it is and dive into that. Yeah, I mean, so like uh, basically, it's Spark. Uh, um, it's basically a framework that really makes uh, um, data processing and parallelizing, you know, data processing task uh, extremely easy. I mean, it's uh, you know for those that uh, uh, they work uh, uh, with Python, like uh, basically like Spark. Uh, uh, you know, provides very similar capabilities as uh, existing libraries such as uh, Pandas, uh, but at scale. So, uh, you know, when you use uh, Pandas, you're you know you're somewhat bounded by your the memory on your local machine because it, it works uh, locally. But with Spark, basically it provides very similar uh, API, very similar functionalities, but at scales, meaning that uh, basically you are you are um, really uh, spreading the, uh, the data uh, across a cluster, so across multiple computers, and doing data processing on top of those. And it really creates a, a number of abstractions uh, that uh, allows people to, to scale, uh, you know, like their application in a seamless way. Um, cool. Now, Spark actually works with, uh, um, can work uh, together with different uh, clusters, different kind of clusters. Um, and one of them is that it can work integrated with uh, uh, Kubernetes. Uh, and that's exactly where uh, the, the solution that we are developing uh, comes into play. Uh, because basically, like, uh, um, when you want to integrate Spark with Kubernetes, you know... To Maybe some... you could explain what Kubernetes is. Um, oh, yes. Well know, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's, uh, uh, it's a deployment. It's basically like a... a, a um, an environment where you can deploy containers, uh, where you, and basically it manages uh, uh, the containers uh, for you. So, what's a container? Quick explanation of that. Basically, like a, a, an application with everything there, like not just the application, but also the OS system, or wrapped up uh, like in a very simple, in a very self-contained. That's why they're called cool container, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> in yeah. a very, uh, uh, in a very structure, in a very uh, simple form. And uh, uh, that you can basically, it, it has everything that, you know, like your application needs to know from the code, but also from all the library or all, all the uh, right. operating system uh, underneath just wrapped up. And it's uh, an extremely good way to actually containerize your application such that you can take that and then deploy it anywhere, like uh, wherever uh, you, you want. Uh, but the, you know, the tricky part is that you want also to have a little bit of a, um, a governor, right? Like a, an orchestrator that manages those containers. So for instance, when the containers uh, goes down, then they uh, bring them back again. But also yeah. actually like one extremely good thing that uh, you know, Kubernetes does is that uh, it also manages the networking for you. So as uh, you know, like containers uh, comes up, then it makes sure that uh, you know the, the different uh, uh, containers can talk to each other by abstracting mm -hmm. uh, you know some networking level like the services and so on. And uh, so we like what Kubernetes does is, is really like making orchestrating and deploying and uh, you know managing your containers extremely easy. And that that really connects with uh, with Spark, right? Because uh, um, 
in Spark, basically what happens under the hood. I mean, so how can Spark, you know, allow people to distribute this, uh, the computation, the data processing across, uh, you know, multiple, uh, multiple computers? Because basically it has uh, uh, two kind of, uh, you know, um, two kind of workload, I would say. He has like a driver, which is basically the, the, the program that orchestrated the execution of your, uh, of your Spark job. And then you have where the actual uh, data is cached and is uh, and the data is processed, which is called the uh, the worker, the executors. Yeah. So what you can do with uh, you know Spark together with Kubernetes is the fact that uh, uh, Spark talks to Kubernetes to allocate this uh, uh, this executor that they are in some sense containers that they are running on Kubernetes, right? So like the um, the really cool uh, thing. The, around integrating uh, Spark with Kubernetes is that you can really horizontally scale like the uh, the number of executor as you like, right? Because uh, basically yeah. like uh, the, the driver has is, uh, you know, going through the uh, the orchestration, the program, it can actually span, you know, the executor that he needs that the, the, the user provides. Whereas uh, like, uh, you know, uh, Spark was uh, used to be used also like in more on-prem environment uh, with Yarn, for instance. And in that case, to some extent, uh, you know, like the the ability to scale it was a little bit more rigid because you had to configure first the nodes, uh, so forth. And it, there was a lot more configuration uh, needed. Mm -hmm. Whereas uh, the integration with uh, uh, with Kubernetes makes this, uh, you know, uh, scaling to a, a higher number of instances, a lower number of instances, much uh, much more easy and much more flexible and, and robust as well to, uh, to to some extent. And, and where do you get the data from to process? What tell, tell me a bit about that? How, how does how, where's data stored and and, and access? Yeah, well, I mean nowadays, um, so Spark is basically a middleware, right? I mean it's uh, like a framework that uh, allows you to create this uh, structure for doing uh, data processing at scale. Uh, but usually, of course, it has to write, read the data somewhere. So you yeah. have, uh, uh, you know, the executor where the actual data is cached and where the data processing happens has to read the, the data from somewhere. And, uh, uh, you know, nowadays, actually, Spark is an extremely uh, well-established uh, uh, product that really features uh, uh, integrations like with, uh, you know, pretty much all the, all the data platform technologies out there. So, I mean, you can store, it provides like connector to, you know, databases, uh, um, such as, uh, you know, Postgres, MongoDB, uh, Redis. Uh, it, mm -hmm. it also provides like a connection, of course, to uh, object storage. So S3, I mean, it has like uh, uh, compatibility uh, with uh, uh, S3 object storage uh, backends, so, which can be S3, mini IO, staff, uh, and so on. Uh, but also it's actually quite interesting because one of the capabilities that Spark provides is also processing streaming data. Uh, yeah. So one of the capabilities, the really cool capabilities that uh, uh, Spark provides uh, is really actually to enable to process streaming data at scale. And in this sense, uh, it also has like uh, an integration with uh, actually another technology that uh, we develop uh, in Data Platform in Canonical, which is, uh, which is Kafka. Yeah, tell us a bit about Kafka. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, basically Kafka is a message broker. So it's uh, um, it's a distributed message broker system where uh, basically you you can um, you, you can publish you can uh, publish messages uh, and you can consume messages. Actually, to 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 some extent, uh, you know, Kafka was born in uh, in LinkedIn, right? Like it's a project mm -hmm. that was uh, uh, was developed initially by by LinkedIn, uh, which is uh, you, you know like uh, quite interesting because uh, it, it really makes uh, you know like the use case of Kafka when you post a message, you know like this uh, this message gets sent to uh, a Kafka cluster, and uh, uh, you know all your follower, all your uh, uh, you know uh, all, all the uh, the people like, following you, then they are like some consumer. So you are. A producer when you post your message you write your message and you hit the button then this message is sent to this uh, uh, kafka cluster and then uh, that also delivers uh, then the uh, the message to all the other uh, you know your, your followers that they are consuming your messages so uh, you see it's really a platform that is really used heavily used 
on um, on real time system where uh, you know you have messages going through that they get uh, uh, deliver and one of the amazing thing about Kafka is that it, it really has a structure that can uh, really scale out uh, your your application so you can really horizontally uh, scale uh, your application so and one of the things that really like Kafka uh, really focus for is actually to have uh, an extremely high uh, throughput and how does it do that is it is it like using sharding or, or how does it how would you like to do that yeah so basically like uh, you know like uh, kafka is uh, uh, is organized internally in some sort of uh, you, you might call them you know like uh, uh, the the tables like uh, for normal uh, you know databases if you come from like a uh, you know normal like a uh, database, like uh, SQL Relational databases, database like, uh, yeah. yeah, or, or no SQL, like a collection slash table. So it has this organization, but in Kafka, they are called uh, topics. Yeah. Uh, so topics, what they can do, they can be then uh, split by different uh, partitions. And that's uh, exactly how the horizontal scalability uh, works uh, for, uh, for Kafka. So basically like uh, you have this topic, uh, which is split by as many partitions uh, as, uh, as you like. And of course, these uh, different partitions, they sit on uh, different machines. Uh, so these basically, on some sense, it uh, allows to have a uh, both like parallel, uh, parallel processing, both on writing, because then you have different partition, you can, you know, the different producer can be uh, writing to, maybe depending on the key, for instance, of the, of the message, depending on the user ID, this kind of things. So, I mean, like you can actually, uh, spread the load using like the IDs of the message that is uh, being producer or like the, the user ID, uh, but also like for uh, actually consumption, also for consumption for uh, for reading, uh, because if you imagine that uh, you know you might have uh, you know different uh, um, you know different uh, um, different consumer, they, they can also like also the load can be spread also on the reading part. Makes sense. So tell tell us tell us a bit about what what you're doing with these technologies at Canonical. Yeah, so that's, uh, I mean, one of the things that we focus on uh, on the in Canonical when it comes to these technologies is really to uh, make them accessible to, to anyone. Because I think one of the, uh, the cool things that uh, there is right now is that there are a lot of uh, uh, open source uh, projects. Uh, but, uh, you know, the operating this, uh, this platform uh, and also like actually operating this platform uh, with, uh, you know, production uh, settings, which mean, yeah. uh, you know, security, integration with uh, authentication, monitoring on top, uh, is not a piece of cake. Best practice configuration, I guess, as well. Yeah, I mean, all the, uh, you know, really operating like, uh, uh, actually like uh, scaling out these technologies even uh, is not uh, a piece of cake. Uh, providing high availability, you know, like uh, the horizontal scaling, configuring the data platform to horizontally scale and make sure that uh, you are indeed highly available. Uh, because I didn't mention this, but also Kafka, for instance, like you have replication, you, know, you have partitioning, but you also have replication in order to provide uh, high availability. Now, configuring all of these uh, is not a piece of cake and you have to understand the, the technology to some extent and the same uh, applies to, uh, to Spark as well. Uh, you, you want to monitor your uh, Spark jobs on a Kubernetes cluster. I mean, that's uh, you have to set that up and you have to study mm. and people. So what we do in Canonical is actually to create uh, a abstraction layer. So some uh, um, some components uh, that basically they help people to operate the technology. So we really distill all the knowledge about operating, uh, for instance, Kafka Spark. Uh, in really some nice and neat code that then can help people uh, to operate the technology, so to, so to enable all these features. Uh, and that's really uh, quite cool, because if you think about this, I mean, everyone, uh, you know, in this, uh, uh, this day usually has to create, uh, you know, their, uh, you know, write bash script or like configure mm. things, Ansible, like if they, uh, or Terraform, like to, if they want to automate the things. Sure, or, or or use a platform as a service, right? So that's the alternative, I guess. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. But you know, if you are on prem, or you, you, you know, you, you. Uh, but once again, I mean, when you are uh, actually like uh, using a platform as a service, of course, uh, you are also like uh, paying, uh, you know, someone to operate uh, the platform uh, 
uh, for you. Yeah, and and you know the the I've I've heard of risks around supply chain around the operations of these things. I mean, I don't know if it's really true, but you know, you, I guess for some people, it will never be acceptable to you know offload that data processing to third parties, right? Yeah, yeah, that's that's right, that's right. And uh, but also like one of the the I think interesting bits uh, is also that. Uh, uh, you know, like the uh, usually platforms. So you have like a, a open source software, but then like the operation is not open source anymore. <laughs> and yeah. What we do in Canonical, yeah. which I, I think it's also like a, a quite cool thing, is also to open source all the code that does the operation, such that that people can also contribute and have a, a open source philosophy, not only on the product itself, but also on the on the layer operating the the data platform. And that's yeah. also why, you know, like uh, over the years in Canonical, we've been uh, uh, developing like Juju, which is a framework which uh, nowadays like, allow you to write, uh, distill all this knowledge about the, the data platform to write the operators that they are uh, managing the data platform in uh, pure Python, because Python is uh, super, uh, you know, super easy to understand. Most of the people uh, nowadays, they, uh, they know Python. So yeah. basically, like we have uh, this, uh, uh, people can also contribute to how to operate in the best way. Uh, technology uh, by you know like uh, working all together on this uh, uh, on this uh, on this operator code which is pure Python very accessible mm. to anyone and also like open source all this part. Cool. So tell me a bit about Juju then. Like you've you've kind of hinted at it, but maybe you could you could uh, tell us a bit more. Go a bit deeper on that. So basically, actually, Juju is uh, what makes uh, uh, makes it possible to uh, create this, uh, uh, this operator in, 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 in Python. So it's basically like uh, you could uh, look at Juju as uh, a little bit of an orchestrator that uh, yeah. uh, then uh, handles and manages uh, your deployments, your application uh, by, you know, like, uh, by basically like uh, uh, parsing and organizing the, this very clean Python code that uh, you, you, you were to write. And, the, and is, it, is it for Kubernetes? Juju. Well, no, I mean, you, you, you can use Juju like um, with extremely very similar uh, user experience, uh, both on VM, but uh, also on Kubernetes. So you can actually handle like two different substrates. And that's actually quite, uh, quite cool because maybe you don't want to use, uh, uh, you know, Kubernetes also, you know, for uh, stateful applications uh, such as uh, data platforms. Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like VM are still like a, 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 a quite uh, a, a quite good uh, substrate to go to. So, so when you say VM, you mean like, do you mean like VMware, or do you mean like Amazon EC2 or Azure or something like that? Well, I mean provisioning of, of VM, basically, like uh, um, you you've not spawned like uh, your uh, you know like uh, your workloads uh, on uh, a Kubernetes container on a container mm -hmm. on a Kubernetes pod. Uh, on, uh, but you would actually spawn those like uh, on actual machines. Uh, so basically, when you use the Juju, you can actually integrate Juju with uh, uh, different uh, provider, different, uh, you know, uh, for instance, cloud provider. Uh, and uh, basically, Juju takes care of, uh, you know, talking to the cloud provider to allocate uh, um, virtual machine on your cloud of choice where yeah. you run actually like your, uh, your workloads. So that's, yeah. uh, it, it is, you know, even abstracting to some extent all the provisioning, all the, uh, you know, setting up the infrastructure, it does this for you with the workload already like uh, set up and, you know, ready to use. So really abstracting a lot of layer uh, on top of, uh, you know, what you were to do mm -hmm. if, uh, you, 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 uh, you, you know, you, you didn't have uh, Juju to actually set up the old infrastructure with, for instance, Kafka Spark. So I should say it as a kind of, in-house platform as a service that runs on the cloud that you can run on the cloud in your own tenancy is that is that how i should see it yeah that's right that's right yes yeah, cool so tell me a bit about the, the the future plans for 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 big data at, at canonical we just released a uh, spark right so yes exactly exactly so uh, right now like uh, we have uh, two products that we are mostly working with uh, which is uh, uh, kafka and spark but uh, but really, like uh, the um, what we are really focusing on is really to actually create uh, uh, like an ecosystem. Because one of the the, uh, the view that we we have is the fact that uh, to really create a number of building blocks that people can 
you know, uh, plug and play and, uh, uh, you, you know, to enable, um, you know, managing data platform all integrated still, you know, using, uh, using Juju. So yeah. like the, the main focus that uh, we have now is actually to integrate uh, all these uh, uh, technologies uh, one with another and also add as, uh, uh, as we go uh, other layer, other technologies uh, on the um, on the stack that uh, that we provide. So uh, we have a bunch of things that uh, we have. Uh, uh, so one, one of the things would also be to integrate this with uh, data governance stack. Mm -hmm. That's uh, that's important. Um, while also allowing people to actually like uh, uh, query the data a little bit uh, easier using Trino, like uh, SuperSAT, like this, and cool. uh, so. That's um, that's really like these two are actually the first pieces on you know a little bit of a more uh, you know more uh, on, on a bigger uh, on a bigger landscape with different uh, components and really creating moving towards creating an ecosystem with the services that you can plug and play uh, seamlessly one uh, with another. If people want to check it out, where, where where can where can we point them to 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 try stuff out or to kick the tires or where where can they where can they learn more? Yeah, so I mean, like we have, uh, uh, first of all, well, we have like uh, on the um, Ubuntu website, we have a page where uh, there is a little bit of a description of all the technologies that we provide. Uh, and it's not just, uh, you know, big data, it's also like SQL, NoSQL. So you have... Uh, it's Ubuntu.com slash data, right? Yeah, that's, that's right. The, that's right. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so uh, there you can already like find uh, a little bit of material and you also have... Uh, uh, the links uh, to the documentation. So, for instance, you can uh, with tutorials that you can try out uh, uh, yourself. Uh, then we have uh, uh, this course where we we generally like uh, engage with the community. We discuss about different topics. Uh, so that's uh, uh, an extreme. And what's the link for that? I think it's uh, discourse.charmab.io. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, so it's uh, but I, I can, uh, we can probably like we can link and so that's a, also another uh, a very uh, good place to also engage with the community so uh, uh, if you you know every topic has like also a thread and you can also see the discussion around uh, some topics so it's an extremely good uh, platform for that uh, of course like we also like uh, um, if you if you want more like a a chit chat user experience. We also have like a Mattermost channel, so a data platform Mattermost channel, so where you can, you know, post uh, some question and get, uh, you know, extremely. Per is that public access? Can anybody? Yeah, yeah, that? yeah, it has. Uh, we, we should have also like a, a link for that, but uh, I'll uh, I'll provide. Yeah, uh, we'll put it in the description. Link. Yeah, yeah, in the description, yeah. that that would be good. Uh, and last but not least, I mean, uh, if one wants is really engaged and likes what uh, we are doing. Uh, it can uh, for sure also engage uh, on GitHub and see, you know, the code that sure. we are working and also like uh, really following like the development of all these uh, uh, these products. And I would say last but not least, you can even apply to Canonically. Yeah, <laughs> <It's really engaged. laughs> yeah we're hiring, right? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we, we are, uh, uh, you know, actively looking for, uh, you know, uh, other day, uh, engineers to actually join the team and join uh, a little bit our mission and uh, our uh, our goal. Awesome. It's been great talking, Enrico. Thank you, Rob. It's been good. Have, Have a, a great good day. day. <laughs> you too. Bye. Bye-bye. Cheers. <laughs>